Shalom, Sawada, Yahweh Bashna Washai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through their men, that being the apostles and bishops of Great Millstone, who are worthy of double honors, and Yahweh Bashna Washai, Bahasham Rakakwadash Brakatham, to the elect of Israel. So I just came across this article um, from InsidePaper.com. It reads French mayor says rioters rammed car into his house <laughs> and um, you know immediately upon seeing this headline I thought about prophecy you know because prophecy is coming to pass day in day out and um, you know what came to mind was second Ezra to 15 chapter you know which I'll get that um, we'll start there I'm not gonna make this a long lesson you know Lord willing Let's go to 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 1. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Who are the Lord's people? The Hebrew Israelites. Who are the Hebrew Israelites? Are so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. And this is why the Lord has his men out there on the street corners. Start with the apostles of Great Millstone, um, the men of Great Millstone, and like-minded righteous Israelite men. You know, he's got us out there on Front Street and he's got us doing these videos to speak unto you, okay? To give you warning of the times that we're coming into. Anyway, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Where can you find the words of prophecy in the Holy Bible? What does the word prophecy mean? To speak before, to say before. So we're giving you warning of things that are going to take place in the future before they happen, right? such as the fulfillment of Revelation 13 and 16. We're warning you about that as it pertains to the mark of the beast, Esau's mark, that being the microchip implant. We're warning you about the judgment of taking that chip, okay, the mark, Revelation 49 and 10. And that judgment is going to come in the form of thermonuclear fire, nuclear missiles, primarily targeting America, Babylon the Great, you know, in the midst of World War Three. We're also prophesying about that. We're prophesying about um, all hell breaking loose in the society in which it's happening already. Hence, what we're seeing here in the news and the headlines, you know, with what's going on out there in um, in France, the uproars of the people. It speaks about that being a sign concerning our Lord's return when you go to Second Ezra's, the ninth chapter. Okay. Um, you know, we're prophesying about the, the time of Jacob's trouble, like I said, pursuant to Jeremiah 30 and verse 7. And um, the hour of temptation, Revelation 3 verse 10. You know, the great persecution that's going to be on the horizon. Revelation 2 verse 10. Um, Isaiah 59 and verse 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up his standard. You know, we're prophesying about all these things that are going to take place in the very near future. Okay. So take heed, it says, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So we're not speaking our own words. We're speaking the words of our Lord. Anything that we say, we back up via the Bible. Okay, and we give you the understanding of what we're saying. Scripturally, it says, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Hence what we have here in the Bible. Okay, in the form of the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. That's what makes up the Bible as a whole. It goes on to say, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, which is unbelief, of them trouble thee that speak against thee. And that's really a message unto us brothers, you know, that have this truth that's actually going out there on the street corners, that's doing these lessons and whatnot. You know, we're not to let any unbelievers trouble our faith, okay? Why? It says, For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. <clears throat> Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So that's everything that's on the horizon, all right? Great death, you know, um, violence, and destruction. And we're pretty much seeing, you know, um, a shadow of things to come, you know, things to come that's going to happen over here in America. We're seeing, you know, stuff like that happening around the world such as what we're seeing take place in France right now. 
Now we're going to jump down to verse 14. It says, Woe to the world. The word woe represents misery and destruction and gloom. Okay, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Why? For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. Sedition is pretty much civil unrest, uprising, uproars of the people, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And your modern day kings and princes are these government officials, okay? Whether it be, you know, the, the president, the prime minister, the king, the mayor, you know, all these different politicians that are part of these different constituencies, okay? Such as your French mayor. And people aren't going to regard them, as we're seeing here. French mayor says, rioters rammed car into his house. <laughs> you see? People don't give a shit no more. They're, they're losing it. And just like Gerald Salente said, you know, when people don't have nothing to lose, they lose it. So it says, rioters in France rammed a car into the home of the mayor of a town south of Paris, injuring his wife and one of his children, the mayor said Sunday. Mayor Vincent Jean Brun wrote on Twitter that protesters rammed a car into his home before setting a fire while his family slept. Last night, a milestone was reached in horror and disgrace. You see? <laughs> but what this guy don't realise is that last night, what took place, you know, what happened unto him and his family was Bible prophecy. Okay? That's all it was. And that's what we're reading here in 2nd Ezra. Let's read it again. 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 16. And this is going to spread throughout the world, throughout the earth, and mainly over here in America. It says, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, that's your government officials, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. All right, in which all of this at some point is going to lead to martial law. And martial law is, you know, when they pretty much establish um, a warlike um, atmosphere, you know, in regions like this. You know, with the troops and whatnot, with the armies, with the National Guard and whatnot. And like I said, this is what's coming to America, you know, for one reason or another. Anyway, this is just a heads up and a brief update as to what's going on around the world. And, you know, when we do lessons like this, we're indeed letting you know that the words of our Lord, as it says here again in verse 2, Second Ezra 15 and verse 2, the words of our Lord are faithful and true. Okay, so we can rely upon what we read about in the Bible concerning the time that we're living in right now. And we're living in some very prophetic times. We're living at the end of the world, as it says in 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 9. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And we're to look out for the signs concerning the end and the return of our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai of the Holy Angels, in which... Like I said, what we're seeing happening out there in France is um, a major sign of our Lord's return because the angel said unto um, Raphael, pardon me, <laughs> the angel Uriel said unto the prophet Ezra that um, there would be, well, let's just get it. Let me just get it real quick. Second Ezra's chapter nine and verse one. <clears throat> It says, he answered me then and said, measured out of time diligently itself or in itself. And how do we do that? We do that by watching, watching the news, seeing what's going on around the world and filtering what we see via the scriptures. Okay. Concerning the time that we're living in right now. That's how you measure the time. It says, and when thou seest part of the science past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand who's the thou. The elect of Israel. Okay. That is the very same time wherein the highest, who's the highest? Our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai. And why is he coming back? Well, he's coming back to 
destroy Esau, Edom, take down these heathens, all right? This kingdom, this vile, wicked kingdom. And he's coming back to gather and deliver the elect of Israel, as it says in Matthew 24 and verse 31 from, um, you know, World War Three and that nuclear destruction, okay? It says, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. And how does the Lord speak? He speaks via his servants, the prophets. Okay, you can read that in um, Hosea 12 verse 10. As well as Luke chapter 1 and verse 70. Anyway, I pray and hope that you're edified. And until next time, I'll say Shalom.